Hey all, Justin Thursday here. I want to show you guys how I remove supports from 3D printed frame walls for the 5050 core system. Um, I've probably printed 30 sets of frames at this point, so I feel like I've got the techniques pretty dialed in. I want to start from the beginning a little bit though. So I print my frame walls upside down and I print them with a brim. Because the tops of my frame design is really thin, it wouldn't stick to the bed, so I added a brim. Now in Kira, the stock width is something like 14. I think I dialed it down to six or seven. It didn't need a whole lot, just enough to stick to the bed. Um, printing at 60 degrees Celsius, and I use Elmer's purple glue sticks, because why take the risk? Um, the reason I flip it, I print it upside down is so that this top layer, you know, once the frame is assembled, looks really good. You don't want support debris and all of that popping off. So. Once your frame is done printing, you want to let your bed cool down or you remove your clips or however your bed is and take your bed off, your glass bed off, and that'll let it uh, cool down a little bit quicker. But for this, your frame is going to be flexible enough to be able to just pinch them. Hear that pop. Pop, pop. There it is. If you bought a Creality, probably anything, really any printer, get your little wedge under here and get it started. I know this side is loose, so get under there, start prying a little bit, work your way up, and there it comes, right off. So, it's a pretty good looking print. This is eSun PLA Pro. This is my T60R model in size large, which is 270 millimeters from axle one, two, four. And I'll show you how to remove these supports. Okay, I've got a different print here, but it's the exact same model. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to bend this raft out of the way. And it'll start cracking off along the sides. Do that all the way around. It should just pop right off, or at least it will in most spots, because it's meant to. That's how a raft is designed basically just three layers of support over the whole thing so and you can see that's popped pretty loose then I'm gonna break these away from the wall there and I just slide them out like that oh, that's just the raft there but here's the support wall this one's being a little tricky so I'm gonna use that pry bar or scraper again bend that out basically up to the H block. Being a little bit of a pain, but that's removing support for you, and that's why I'm doing this video. Okay. That way. And sometimes I'll get it here where you can see it's still on the print body. <clears throat> I'll take a razor blade and I'll try to separate that a bit. I'm not using too much pressure because I don't want to slip and hit myself. If that doesn't work, you can come down here between the support and the wall and just separate it that way. So there, it's cut through. So next, I'm going to use a pair of channel locks pliers or in my case robo grips i don't know if they even make these anymore i'm just gonna break off this little bit of raft here at the edge okay. see then it's just the main support area there you're gonna grip it right where the support meets the print body and you see it's broke off to the h block we'll do the same thing on the other side uh -huh. get rid of that Grip it right between there. As long as you're not grabbing the print body and just the support, you can kind of grab it wherever, just as long as you're grabbing enough meat. Okay, so I kind of missed here. This didn't break off the way I had hoped, so I'm gonna try to pry it away. There we go. So I felt it crack loose. It's still on there, but next, break off this additional bit of raft here. <clears throat> Then we'll grab all that support on the inside of the H block. Okay, sometimes it's harder than others. 
there we go. Now we've got the bulk of that support pulled out. So now I'm gonna come in here with an X-Acto knife and get rid of all this extra bit of support that's still in there. Just shave it down flat to where you know the body should be. Because you want that core to sit completely flat. You don't want anything in the way. You know, if it's just a tiny little piece, it will probably compress it, but I'd rather not take the chance of things not sitting perfectly flat and just make sure it's it's completely clear and clean. Okay. It's pretty clear up there now. I'm just going to take this flathead screwdriver and break off the rest of the support that's still sticking into the inside of the grind block area. Just basically scraping it flat. You don't want that stuff breaking off and rattling around in the frame later. Okay. And you might see I've got a lot of this stringing here. It's kind of hard to get on film, but you can see that. Just wipe that away with your fingers for now. We'll come back to it. Next, I'm going to come in here with my needle nose pliers and grab these. Now, I print my support at a 60 degree angle rather than the stock 45 degree angle. Reason being, it makes these little pieces much easier to pull out. So, if you had 45 degrees, the support would be much wider and you wouldn't you probably wouldn't have enough room to grab that with your needle nose pliers. You'd have to use a little flathead screwdriver like this. But doing so, you kind of dent the walls a little bit, and then it just doesn't look great. So, um, Most filaments like this don't need a ton of support, especially if you're printing at a reasonable speed, like 45 to 50 millimeters per second. So I'm going to keep going around and pulling all these out. Side's a little trickier because of the one-sided axles. There's a little bit less room. So what you can do is you put your finger on the back of the support because it goes all the way through the frame wall and just, just give it a little bit of a push as you're rocking it like this. And that makes it much easier to pull out. I was having trouble with one of them on the other side. And then I was like, oh yeah, push it out as you're pulling. Okay, now that those are out, we'll grab our X-Acto blade again, and then we're just going to peel off any little bit of uglies left behind by the support, and any little burrs that might still be in the axle holes. That way we don't have any issues getting our spacers in. Yeah, you can see a little bit of support left on there. Can't get it to focus. There we go. Yep. Because with these one-sided axles, you want them to fit on this side very tightly. Because um, if there's any slop, you can end up stripping out the walls, so it's got to be a really good fit. And as a last little bit of insurance for the spacers, or the holes for the spacers, I special ordered, not special ordered, but it's, I live in the U.S., so it's hard to get a 10 millimeter drill bit. Um, and I just go through here, each hole. That just cleans up the extra little burrs. Because 3D printing prints in layers, so if I'm printing vertical like this, it's doing layer, layer, layer steps. So it doesn't make perfect circles. If I had printed this on the side, it probably wouldn't be an issue. Okay. And, that, and that usually leaves a little bit of material behind, so I come back, clean off those little bits one more time. Okay. Then you'll want to go through, and each hole you want to take a spacer 
and just make sure it fits. And to do that, I grab a spacer, bring it up to the hole, and I grab an axle over here, and just work it in. And because there's normally a core there, that gap on, on wheels one and four is fine. Kind of rock it back out so that that's a good tight fit, not too tight, not too loose. And then you do the same thing for wheels two and three. And if you can get it that far down, then you know it's pretty good because it'll squeeze in when you get, go to put the wheel in. So you'll want to do that all the way around and then pop wheels in, tighten them up, and that'll make sure your spacers are really locked into the walls. For the next step, you'll want to make sure there are no spacers in it. Um, so for all those fuzzies, uh, it's called stringing, that was left behind, and for some of the debris left over from the rough edges of the support, we'll take a heat gun. Um, you could probably use a hair dryer on high heat. I haven't tried it. I just have this heat gun, and I do it on low heat. And that gets hot pretty quickly. I just always make sure that's about as close as I can safely get my hand, and even that's pushing it. So you just want to go over the whole frame just really lightly. Inside of the walls, inside of the grind block, Other side. Now this is not a heat treatment. Um, a heat treatment would be heating the whole thing all the way through to about 200 degrees Fahrenheit or so, depending on your filament and all of that, but frames are really hard to heat treat. All this is doing is basically cleaning up our little ugly bits of plastic. Um, if you overheat it, you run the risk of your frame shrinking wherever it was overheated and then Spacers won't fit, axles, wheels won't fit, the wall may not even fit on the 50-50 core. So, just a light coat here, and as it's warm, some of those strings that may be a little bit more stubborn, they'll wipe off a lot easier when they're a little bit warm. Or for instance, I don't know if you can see it, I've got a little bit of... I don't know, they're probably Z seams on the inside of this groove. And heat them up a little bit, and you can flatten them just with your thumb. If the plastic is too hot to touch, then you've gotten it too hot and you need to set it down and take a break. Let it cool down and make sure it fits on your core. So yeah, that looks pretty good to me. So the next step is to make sure it fits on a core. So to test fit your core, you want to start it on one side put the spacers in so it locks it together. Okay. Close it in. And then put the spacers on the other side. Yeah. So this is a Gen 1 core. It's not going to fit because the Gen 1 is 250 millimeters, or in this case, a size large 270 millimeters from axle 1 to 4. The new ones are 271 millimeter. And you wouldn't think that one millimeter makes that big of a difference, but it does. Might be able to see that it's not quite lining up, but when you have the new cores, that's how you would go about testing it. And that should be everything you need to know about removing supports from your 3D printed walls for the new 5050 core system too. Good luck.